fly fishing. It's nothing like a good pipe and a good fly rod. In God's creation. Unfortunately, I'm just in my backyard. And while we can't go fly fishing today, I would like to show you some gear. So let's get started. This is my handy fly rod. Got it on sale at the Bass Pro. It's a Cabela's rod. They make them in all sorts of sizes, but this is a real good starter. This is a nine foot five weight. Comes in four pieces so it can break down real small for when you're traveling. Some of you may want to learn how to fly fish. You can go do a little pressure real quick. A lot different than yesterday's video where I was using a spinning rod. What you have here is fly line tied to tibet, which is like uh, fluorocarbon. And at the end you'd put a little fly. Uh, you can practice without any bait on the end when you're casting a fly rod because you're really just casting the line. Pull the line out this way, over top of your finger, okay? And you got to let go of the line, but basically you're just going to keep the line in the air between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. It's a good way to start. Just a little bit of line out there. Now you don't want to go back and forth too fast because it's going to get all tangled. You've got to get into a rhythm, like music. Come back 10 o'clock, forward to 2 o'clock. Or the other way around. 2 o'clock, 10 o'clock. You don't want to wait too long because the line will fall to the ground. You want to keep it up there in a straight line. You can pick a straight line like the roof line over here on the shed. And you want that rod tip to go straight across. You don't want it to come up and down. You want it to go straight across with a parallel line. And then you'll get used to the rhythm of keeping more line out. And as it goes, you want to pull a little more line every time. And your rhythm's going to slow down a little bit. Before you know it, you can catch from your neighbor's fence to your neighbor's fence. How you do it. Smoking is bad for your health. I do not encourage you to smoke, especially even a pipe at this age. But it is true that most fly fishermen smoke pipes while they fly fish in all the paintings. So by the time you turn 18, you're probably going to want to learn where to get a pipe from. But for now, I don't suggest it at all. What I do suggest is just some very basic tackle. Now, earlier in the video, you saw me fly fishing. And what I would have put on the end of the tippet after the fly line is just a simple fly. Now, the really cool thing about flies is that they're made to imitate the natural insects that you'll find. Um, whether they are going to be on the surface, or whether they're a little heavier like this woolly booger and made to go down into the ground and look like a worm. Tying flies is an art form and you can spend lots of time figuring out how to tie flies. If you want to learn more about fly fishing you should send Dr. Struther an email at kstruther at heights.edu because he grew up fly fishing and guiding for Orvis. And now he runs a charter company on the Chesapeake Bay. Some of you have been out with him. Um, here's what you really need to get started if you want to have a chance at doing most anything. If you could zoom in down here. You're going to want, here's a spinner bait like we used in the first video. Uh, spinner, blades come, spinner baits come with different blades. This is a willow blade. A willow blade can go faster without getting high in the water column. This is a Colorado blade, and a cross between the two of them, you can imagine, is called an Indiana blade. Um, this is a very simple live line rig. Okay, this is called a circle hook. You may want to have a circle hook. These are your soft plastics. 
Okay, you could buy a tube. Tubes are really good for uh, bass fishing. You could buy things, maybe you want to Im Im imitate a lizard. Okay, this is a soft plastic that uses a lizard. Here's what a worm looks like. This is already tied up and rigged. All it would need is a weight on the top, which you you run on the line with a toothpick. Okay. Um, one of the best things to start with if you have no bait is a beetle spin. A beetle spin is a cross between a soft plastic and a spinner bait. And actually, if you don't want to use the spinner, it's just a grub. This catches uh, in your fresh water, this will catch pretty much anything. Very simple to use. Something you want in your tackle box. You don't have to spend a lot of money, you don't need anything extravagant, but it is helpful to have a couple colors of different things, depending on what's going on with the, uh, the water and, and what's being eaten at the time. Uh, this is a slide weight. A slide weight is a good way to add weight onto the line. But you really are going to want to buy some split shot. These split shot get added to the line. Uh, they're used for bobbers and worms. They just attach right onto the line and help it sink. You want a variety of different sizes of hooks. This is the number six hook. I use this hook a lot. This is a long shank, probably two aught long shank hook. You might find pre-lined hooks like these. This is a number six pre-lined. And we use these for bottom rigs and all the time for bobbers and worms. Okay, moving down this way. In the early in the morning and late at night, you might want to try fishing topwater lures. This is a torpedo. This is a popper. Okay, this is a very old spinner. This is called a MEPS spinner. Some people call them foxtails because they look like they have a foxtail on the end. Of course, then you have your hard plastic banks like baits like your crankbait. This one's clear brown colored to imitate probably a crawfish, and it has rattles in the middle. Give it extra. Now it has a lip on it. Crankbaits have different sized lips. They could be longer and they could be rounded to the front and they'll give a different kind of action. Also, a longer bill will make it go deeper back in the water, but the faster, unlike a spinnerbait, the faster you crank, the deeper it goes. Um, on a spinnerbait, you know that the slower you crank, the deeper it goes. This is a Rapala or a lipless crankbait. It uses weight to get down in the water, so it's like a spinnerbait where when you hit the water, it's gonna go down, and when you pull it, it'll come up fast further. A couple other things I keep in my tackle box, bobbers. I'll eventually show you how to catch on a bobber and a worm. This is a casting plug. It's a half ounce casting plug. If you want to practice casting around your house, it's better to use either no line like the fly rod or a rubber casting plug. And honestly, when I'm freshwater fishing, I almost always tie on a clip. This is what we call a swivel because it keeps the line from twisting and you can put different lures on the end without having to tie them all on. Now this is an extremely large saltwater ocean swivel. But you may want to use something as small as this guy in here as long as it's big enough that you can get it out with your fingers. It's probably a good size swivel. I'll put it next to my ring so you can see. Okay. Here's an a bottom rig that's already pre-run with some uh, little different colored balls. Also has these red beads. Then it already has the hooks online in there. This is what you attach your weight to. So this would be a great thing if you could spend time at Bethany Beach or Ocean City down in North Carolina this summer. I like to have a weigher, combination weigher, to see how big my fish was. Yesterday we caught a catfish that was about that heavy and it's always helpful to make sure that you have a regulation size fish by having a tape measure I think the catfish we caught yesterday wouldn't quite have been able to be measured with this one about 35 inches okay you're gonna need a pocket knife or um, pliers or scissors 
And I like to have a, a variety of different sizes of things. The weights, different sizes, hooks, different sizes, bobbers, different sizes, because you never know what's going to be out there when you're fishing. Okay? I did speak a little bit in the first video about the difference between spinning reels and bait casting reels. Okay? This is a bait casting reel. Okay? Notice that there's no bail. We talked about clicking the bail over. Bait casting reel, you can tell the rod goes with the bait casting reel because it has this place for your finger. And you you cast with the reel on top. So if your rod and reel at home looks like this, you've got a bait casting reel. It should also have some kind of button, and that is how you release the line. Okay, when you let go of the button, it goes down. When you click it over, then you can reel the thing back in. Okay? So um, you need to know if you've got a spinning or a bait casting reel. Here's an interesting combination of the two. This doesn't have a button on your thumb, and you use it like a spinning reel, except instead of having to grab the line, you click it over and it operates the way a um, bait caster works, and then you click it back over. That is about it. I mean, that's all we're going to need to get started. So once you have found a, a reel and a rod that you're going to use or ordered one, maybe put a little tackle box together. Decide if you're going to use a bait caster, a spinner, or a fly rod. You know, they, can, they are all fished in all situations, whether it's freshwater, saltwater, or brackish. Um, and half the battle is just getting some tackling gear together and then we're going to go out to a lake or a stream or a pond and start catching some fish. See you tomorrow. Am I allowed to tell the kids to smoke? Uh, not really. Oh. It's your line, dude. Flies. Don't leave home without him. Where's my hat? Uh, oh. Oh! I don't think it's gonna work. We can't, we can't do a fishing video in our backyard. There's no water here. I'm playing, I'm... Mm. The video is all right. Let's we're done. Look, the ponds are closed. True, but uh, the rivers God. are closed. The bay isn't closed. Actually, they're all open. We should go out fishing. I'm so confused.